What's up guys? Sile Fantasia here with another Allegro tutorial. And uh, in the previous tutorial we covered game loop timing regulation. And because of this we can now run our program on all computer systems and have it run exactly at the same rate on all systems. And that is good. Um, so in this tutorial I'm going to cover what's called multiple object creation and in a nutshell it just means um, creating maintaining and controlling multiple objects on the same screen so let's get started um, it's a major milestone in our um, in our game in our development so first things first since that we've established sections of our code uh, for example um, in the previous um, well I believe no it was two pre two tutorials ago I talked about the game loop so I told you about logic and drawing so we can actually label these sections now we're gonna comment them so that So that we can easily refer to. So now we have the logic and the rendering part. So the logic is actually in the the core clock portion, and the rendering falls under it, out of the bracket. So that's our structure. So let's run our program again so that we don't forget exactly what it is so we can we can control this blue ball here and it runs fairly smooth now what we want to do is we want to create another object now first what I want to do is I want to change the image I'm gonna use Mario again and I'm gonna change our bitmap pointer name to Mario so we can easily refer to it um, so now we want to create another object that we can control so what we need to do is we need to create another image and I've got a surprise for you we're gonna throw Sonic into the mix Okay, so now we've got Sonic's image data, and the pointer to it is stored in Sonic, and we're going to have his position data. Now, because he's going to assume different positions independently of Mario, we're going to have to name his position variables something else other than X and Y because that's Mario's. So let's name it SX and XY, SY. For Sonic's X and Sonic's Y. Okay, and we're going to initialize that to zero. So now we have the information that we need to draw Sonic where he needs to be drawn. So the drawing goes in rendering. So we're going to draw. Oh. I forgot. Whenever you change names and t uh, variable names in your program, make sure you change them everywhere in the program, or else you're going to get errors. So we change. So we change it from character to Mario because character previously referred to the ball. So we changed it to Mario. And so now we we're going to do. Ugh. We're going to draw Sonic onto the bitmap. Remember that's our bitmap layer, and we're drawing his image with his X and his Y because so we, we don't want to do X and Y for Sonic because that's Mario's X and Y um, and we want to destroy his image data ooh I can't type today So now, give that a good look over 
and it looks great. Okay, so let me compile. Okay, so now we have Sonic drawn on the screen as well. They're both at position zero zero, and that brings me to another key point in game loop order. And if you remember two videos ago, I um, stated that the order that uh, things are executed in the game loop don't matter. Well, drawing um, is a situation where order does matter, and I'm going to tell you why here. Uh, the order at which you draw things determine their, which it, what things are overlaid on top of the other. So, for example, Sonic is laid over top of Mario because we drew Sonic after we drew Mario here in our code. So, because Sonic was drawn after, it's going to get drawn right over top of Mario, so he's overlaid there. Um, so whenever you have multiple objects, the things that get drawn first are going to get drawn over by things that you call later, that you draw later. So that's what that is. So now we can um, we can move Mario um, in any direction he wants, but the thing is that he's just drawn under Sonic's, like he's drawn first and then dr Sonic's drawn l later. Um, so we don't have any code that we can use it to, to control Sonic because we haven't read any key presses in for him so we need to do that we're gonna copy Mario's control data and let's say maybe we, we want to control Sonic with wads okay so it would be Okay, so now um, we want to change Sonic's X and Sonic's Y. Okay, so now oops, to close that. So now we can control Sonic now and Mario independently of each other. So now I'm controlling Sonic with wads and I'm controlling Mario with the arrow keys. So now um, that's that's great. We have two objects here. Both can be controlled independently of each other with different key presses. So now what I'm going to give you a solution to is how to create multiple to create objects quickly more quickly because in commercial video games there are certain there usually is more than two objects drawn on the screen at the same time um, usually sometimes there are even over there are like over 50 objects drawn on the, on the screen at the same time so for example like space shooters you have maybe enemies flying around you know bad guys flying in V formation things like that so what we want to do is um, since we have Mario and Sonic what do you notice in common about them well we know that they both have an image like they both have a um, a picture that represents them like th we have that the bitmap and then we have Sonic's bitmap and they both have a position data that holds their X and Y coordinates as to where to draw them so Every time that we want to create a new um, object, we have to create an image and a position for them. And so, to do that quickly, we don't keep, you know, doing this, you know, over and over and over again. No, that would be unpractical. So, what we do is we utilize a feature of C++ called object-oriented programming. And because of object-oriented programming, um, handling large pieces of collected data is made possible easily um, so for example if we wanted to create a general game object uh, like a stencil to uh, for every other other every other object to be created from we would make a new type and that's called a class 
so um, I'm not going to get into that in the Allegro tutorials but um, in maybe in the next in the next video what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to create um, another how to create mo a stencil from um, these pieces of information so that we can create new objects from the same stencil instead of you know copy it you know doing the same thing over and over again we can just use the same um, pattern for every object that we create so until then this is Sia Fantasia saying see ya <laughs>